Today in the news, we got huge VRAMs, bigger Navi, and DDR5. What's up, guys? I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with NVIDIA. In the last few weeks, a whole lot has come out regarding the announcement and launch date of the RTX 3000 series of GPUs. In around July, we expected them to land in between August and October. Well, new information has popped up from different sources and we can now narrow most of its lineup. Gamers Nexus received information from a board partner that the announcement would be made on or around September 9th. As for the actual launch schedule and number of cards at said launch, it looks like Nvidia is going to try and cover all of its bases against AMD. According to this article from WCCF Tech, later picked up and supplemented by Igor's lab, Nvidia is planning to launch three cards in September. The three new RTX cards would be comprised of a top of the line 24 gigabyte card, likely the replacement for the 2080 Ti or Titan RTX, a 10 gigabyte card, likely the replacement for the 2080 Super, and an 8 gigabyte card, following the trend down to replace the 2070 Super. Now, those are the September releases. Believe it or not, three other cards are also on the way. A 20 gigabyte version of the 2080 Super replacement would release on the first half of October, and two other cards with 16 gigabytes and 8 gigabytes of VRAM are still TBD. Now, why would Nvidia make two 2080 replacements, one with 10 and one with 20 gigabytes of VRAM, and two 2070 Super replacements with 8 and 16 gigabytes of VRAM? Well, the current rumors point at AMD's big Navi GPUs having 16 and 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So if AMD's new cards can keep up with the RTX 3000 series, then VRAM could be the deciding factor. As for why Nvidia would delay the 20 gigabyte card, well, rumors point at big Navi making its first appearance on October 7th. So they might want to make sure that they price it properly or just steal AMD's thunder once the announcement is done in October, if that's really when it's gonna happen. Moving on, we got some more AMD. Now, if we're talking Navi 2X, we already know most of the information floating around. Up to 80 compute units for a total of 5,120 stream processors, rumors of 16 gigabytes and a 12 gigabyte variant, and the possibility of screaming high clock speeds of well over two gigahertz hinted by the PS5's specs. So now it's time to look at bigger Navi, AKA Navi 3X, AKA Navi 31. It seems like they did it, or at least we think they did. AMD might finally start to use chiplets for the GPUs. It's a stretch, but Kamachi and Saka over on Twitter came back from his leaking break and gave us a pretty nice info dump. What I'm interested in here is the line about Navi 3X. GCD slash MCD, probably meaning graphics complex die and memory complex die, or at least something similar with die at the end. This would allow the same kind of flexibility that both current Ryzen and Epic CPUs have. The memory complex die could act as the I.O. die and contain other things like the Radeon Display Engine and Multimedia Engine. In any case, it looks like AMD is so far into RDNA 3 that Navi 41 aka Navi 4X is peeking its head already. Lastly, in general CPU motherboard memory news, it looks like DDR5 is coming fairly soon. An anonymous tip sent to videocards.com said that the upcoming Alder Lake S generation will be the first to use the technology. And since we know that Intel is accelerating the timeline to have it out by the second half of next year, well, that means DDR5 is happening next year. What's curious is the lack of two channel per DIMM configurations. As you can see here, it says DDR5 UDIMM one DPC and DDR5 UDIM2 DPC. That last part means one DIM per channel and two DIMs per channel. But we know that DDR5 can actually run two channels per DIMs or half a DIM per channel, depending on how you want to look at it, which could bring some wild configurations. So yeah, I don't know why it's not there. Maybe it's written somewhere else, but I hope that they do take advantage of that technology. As for AMD, since they are moving to a different socket or at least a different chip set that won't support previous generations, we can assume that they will also introduce DDR5 into the mix. Personally, I think we're probably going to still see a mix of DDR4 and DDR5 motherboards at the start like we did with Skylake and DDR3 and 4. 
And that's pretty much it for the catch up, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment. If you wanna talk about today's stories, if you wanna talk about my voice, uh, my throat just hurts a whole lot. It's like I swallowed a bunch of rocks. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. What's that? What happened? Oh, okay, take care. I thought I saw something on my screen. Through the viewfinder, you know?